So this lesson is on an intermediate technique routine for classical guitar. So I've already gone through a number of different technique routines so far. So I've done the beginner routine, the late beginner routine, the early intermediate routine. This is the intermediate routine. Then there's going to be a late intermediate routine and an advanced routine or early advanced routine. So we're kind of going through different sets of um, exercises and different sets of what an what these players might practice for a technique warm-up or a technique session. And I'm using my book, um, Classical Guitar Technique, which is, you know, over 100 pages of exercises, so it has hundreds of exercises, and it has these practice routines for technique as well at the beginning of the book, but these videos kind of clarify it. You can watch all of the technique exercise videos for free, and so I'm not going to dive into like specifics about the exercises. This is about the overview of the actual routine itself and how you should maybe manage your time, what kind of things you should be practicing. So there's a link for that book um, under the video. You can get it in hard copy or PDF, so you can go check that out. You can use your own books and your own materials. Um, if you have tons of technique books, I'm sure you can formulate your own um, you know, set your own practice routine but just keep in mind that like you need good materials and you need to be able to manage them so maybe you have to like photocopy them from various books my book has it all in one place but like i said there's tons of technique books out there so if you want to formulate it using your own material just make sure you're using good materials and that are appropriate to your level and that they have good fingering and and so you build up good habits there's a lot of stuff in the intermediate routine so i'm going to talk about your core elements first and the things that you should be practicing every time you sit down and have a technique session. And then after that, I'll talk about all the other exercises and how they fit in and how you should manage your time. Because there's more stuff on my list than you can practice in one session. Um, this session, you know, a practice, a technique session of 20 minutes long or 25 minutes long. Um, this is too much material, so uh, I'll talk about how you should manage your time a little bit. So the main core principles, the main core things that you should be practicing are scales, arpeggios, slurs, that's hammer-ons and pull-offs in guitar lingo, barre, or bar or capo, and maybe some um, basic stretch exercises as well. Those are the five things that I think that you should be practicing. So every time you sit down to practice, you should be doing one of the, well, all of those five things in some kind of amount. So all the other exercises will fit kind of into those categories, or they'll, be, or they'll be there to help you improve one of these categories. So again, scales, arpeggios, slurs, barre, stretch. Now, let's take a look at all the exercises and how you might kind of group them under those categories. So the open string exercises, I have 97 of them listed here. There's 100 in the book, but there's 97 listed here. Obviously you can't practice all 97 for each session, but I recommend you go through them all initially and check them off if you feel like you can do them confidently at a reasonable tempo. Um, and But then make a list of the ones that give you the most trouble, the techniques that you're deficient at, and make sure you're, you isolate those ones so you can kind of have a little list of open string exercises that that give you trouble maybe it's some of the awkward string crossing exercises or maybe it's um, some of the arpeggio exercises where you start on um, or you accent a specific finger maybe it's the two-part exercises maybe it's some of my expansion exercises in the right hand which give you a lot of trouble so you should isolate those all those open string exercises will help with your scales and arpeggios um, that's what they're there for, is to give the right hand practice playing um, scales and arpeggio textures just with the right hand. And hopefully that will help you improve your scales and arpeggios. Now, if you feel confident with all of the open string exercises, you can probably skip them. Um, I, I still recommend that you do a couple of them, but you can generally skip them and do the Giuliani arpeggios and the scales. Those will give you the same right hand practice, except it's going to include the left hand, so it's more complicated. So, like I said, um, those open string exercises will help with your scales and arpeggios. Giuliani exercises, I've recommended 1 to 17, 25 to 35, 81 to 100. 
that's kind of a cross section of the Giuliani 120 exercises. Those are ones that I think are very appropriate for intermediate level and that I think you should, you should practice. Um, again, that's a lot of arpeggios. So start checking off the ones you feel very confident with and isolate the ones that give you trouble. Then um, I have some alignment exercises. Basic alignment exercises um, are kind of corrective exercises for the left hand or opportunities for the left hand to um, just play with very good hand positions. So on your fingertips, close to the fret, curved fingers, you know, being very, very careful. So those alignment exercises will help with your scales. If you have a scale and you need to organize your hand, maybe some of the alignment exercises or will help organize your left hand and get your movements small and precise so that when you go to play a scale, you can use that same technique in your scale. So alignment exercises will help with your left hand scale work and maybe with your slurs as well and your stretches actually for that matter. Alignment exercises, very, very important for the left hand. Um, chromatic scales, of course, are part of the scale category. Um, shift exercises. Shift exercises will help when you, well, when you have a shift, obviously. But let's say you have a two octave movable scale pattern. That shift, getting really confident with your shifts um, will rely on sometimes just practice and relaxation and good tech, you know, good left hand technique, but maybe sometimes having a shift exercise will allow you to isolate the actual problem and then you can tackle that problem. So some of the shift exercises um, do like um, increasingly larger shifts. So at first there'll be like a small shift um, and then the, the shift gets larger and larger and that will give you an opportunity to figure out what is required of difficult shifts. And sometimes scales cover that, but they don't cover that much ground. You know, shift, uh, scales are pretty efficient little things. Um, they're not gonna do big, huge shifts. So the shifting exercises that I've included in the book should help with that. And remember, you can watch all the videos for free from the book, so you can go check out that shift lesson, the left lesson on the shift exercise. Um, movable scales are, we just talked about that, it's part of the scale category. Triadic arpeggios um, kind of mix the scales and arpeggios together. Um, triadic arpeggios are when you go through like the, the one, three, five of the scale. One, three, five. different than like Giuliani's right hand patterns. We sometimes call arpeggios uh, like what Giuliani does. Giuliani's things are really just right hand studies on chord progressions, which are arpeggios, um, but these are like triadic arpeggios. These are very challenging, um, very good for your both hands uh, in terms of your technique. So that definitely goes under the scale and the arpeggio category kind of. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have slurs, of course. This grade level, we just have a lot more in the way of slur exercises. We have um, slurs that go across this way, slurs that go up this way, and all the different combinations. Also some like, you know, like multi-rhythmic um, or multi-patterned slurs where you're doing hammer-ons and pull-offs or ascending and descending slurs in, you know, quick succession. So that's something to um, consider is that you're just gonna have more difficult slur exercises, but they're all in the book. That just goes under the slur category. It's pretty self-explanatory. Again, watch all those videos that I have for the slur exercises. Finger independence. This kind of goes under the stretch exercise at this point. I'm hoping that by this point, you've had some pretty good finger independence. But there's a couple of exercises that can kind of get put under stretch um, or stretch and finger independence. Um, that would be like actual finger independence exercises where you're like moving, you know, one finger at a time and learning how to move your fingers really well. But there's also like scales in thirds and scales in sixths, which um, some, sometimes the uh, stretch in the left hand gets increased or decreased. So it's kind of like, um, 
there's small, tiny stretches that will come up with that. And there's also, I have some actual stretch exercises where you actually have to do some pretty difficult stretch, stretching in the left hand. So that, there's that to consider as well. Um, but I, I would put all of these under like a stretch and finger independence category. And there's a whole bunch of them in my book, um, but they would all go kind of under that category. Um, a chromatic scale and octave, same thing. Um, you know, w once you get into doing like octaves, you're doing lots of like different shapes like this. And so that's kind of a stretch exercise as well. Now, barre exercises or capo. Um, I think particularly intermediate students have a trouble with their barre and um, they have to practice it. They have to practice it every day. And um, sometimes you can do that like by playing cadences at the end of your scales, like the Royal Conservatory suggests. But sometimes a more dedicated exercise is better for you. Sorry. You know, like not just doing your barre, but also getting like practicing using all your other fingers with a barre. So you get real practice doing the. Um, Something that's more similar to a repertoire, right? Where you have to really be activated with your fingers while doing barre. So doing some actual dedicated exercises every day are very important. Um, tremolo is another one on my list. Um, the tremolo exercises, very important, but I would really put those just under arpeggios. Um, there, you know, there are some tremolo exercises in the Giuliani arpeggios, but some dedicated tremolo practice is not a bad idea, especially at this level, you're gonna start playing tremolo pieces, or at least you'll soon be playing tremolo pieces in the near future. So it's worth um, considering practicing it now so that you're good at it before you start a tremolo piece. Um, preparing your technique before you actually play a piece with that technique is the way to do it, right? It will save you so much heartache when you actually go to practice a tremolo piece. There's also some basic resquiados on open strings in my book. Um, those are great right hand exercises. Um, I don't know what I would, I don't really put them under any category. I don't think they have to be practiced every single day, um, but you may want to include them for a while and get some, get some good muscle memory in your right hand um, and practice doing it so that when they come up in pieces, you are able to do it. And same thing with the natural harmonics in this. So we practice like some basic natural harmonics. Um, but the exercises, again, I don't think you have to practice them every day. They're not part of your core technique, but you, sh you do have to be able to do them at this level. They're going to come up in your pieces. So you might as well go through them enough that you're very familiar with them and that you're able to do them. So that's a lot of information I just talked about. To sum it up, you need to practice your scales, arpeggios, slurs, barre, and stretch. If you're doing that, you're doing a good job. All my other exercises in my book fit into those categories and help you accomplish those different categories and help you get better at those categories. So um, in, integrate them, but don't get bogged down or, or you know, overloaded by the number of exercises. Just make sure you're doing enough from each of those categories and then use the other exercises Go through the book, put a little check mark next to each one that you can do well, and then you'll, you can just say like, okay, I've covered that. I still have to practice my scales, but I've covered that open string, all the open string exercises that help with scales. So I hope you find that helpful. And um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment in the YouTube comment section. I usually get around to answering them within a few days, even though there's lots of them, but uh, the next routine will be the late intermediate routine.